access to early childhood education in Helena recently got $200,000 from the Headwaters Foundation. MTN's Tom Buchanan spoke to the grant recipients about how this money will help families in the area. Thousands of dollars will soon make its way into the greater Helena area to help support the children aged zero to five. The research shows that children who are supported early on do better out do better later on in life. Um, they have better outcomes in so many different areas of their life. The zero to five grant from Headwaters Foundation was recently given to the Early Childhood Coalition of the Greater Helena area. This grant is going to allow the coalition to rebuild and come back together after COVID badly damaged the coalition, according to Brandy Thomas, Provider Services Supervisor for Child Care Connections. The coalition is made up of various organizations such as St. Peter's Health, Child Care Connections, and the Helena School District. The grant will be used for community events as well as community projects. For example, the ECC just approved a donor breast milk project at St. Peter's. Thomas acknowledges the issue of child care in Montana and how much of a problem it poses for parents across the state. We are in a severe child care shortage in this state. Um, there is a crisis. Thomas says that the community will have a say in where this money goes and that folks can reach out to the coalition with suggestions. The idea of this coalition is going to be driven by the community and what early childhood needs in the community. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. A Lewis and Clark County judge issued a restraining order Monday blocking a Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services rule to restrict abortion access for patients on Medicaid. The lawsuit was filed Friday by Planned Parenthood, the Center for Reproductive Rights, and the ACLU of Montana. The new rule, which was set to take effect Monday, says that only physicians can provide abortions to Medicaid patients, removes the options for telehealth, requiring an in-person exam for Medicaid patients seeking an abortion and requires abortion providers to seek prior approval for Medicaid patients. The opponents of the rule say the new rule would have effectively eliminated abortion access for most Medicaid patients in the state, particularly those who are low income. A hearing for a preliminary injunction is set for May 12th.